I'll turn this on and uh, well, it's times times three again from West Hollywood Silver Spoon and we're going to open up with uh, a comment after coffee. Yeah. From Harry. Yeah. yeah, Harry was just talking about this author who was this Tom Horn. Yeah. Queen did a movie about Tom Horn. Tom Horn was like a Hemingway character. Oh, the yeah. Stephen McQueen. Stephen McQueen played Tom Horn. Yeah. Butterfly McQueen. Tom Horn was the guy who captured Geronimo. <laughs> he was a. He didn't was stop a, me to listen. You didn't yeah. even listen to what I said. Yeah. But you don't acknowledge it in your face. It's like it's like an attorney in court. <laughs> That's right, an attorney in court. So he don't be a, be a fire in the corner. You know? He's, Go on, I'm sorry. Yeah. It just was a strange thing. Steve McQueen. So Tom Horn was hung. He was charged and convicted of uh, uh, killing a 14-year-old boy in 1902, and he was hung. And so while he was in prison, he wrote a vind Tom Horn a vindication. And I was in the movie Tom Horn, but anyway, to get to the point, Tom Horn in the book, he would go out, and as a young man, he would, would be with an older guy. They'd be sitting around a campfire hunting, and in the morning, this older guy would get up, and he would be real angry. And then afterwards, Tom Horn said, after so-and-so got his growl off, he was okay. That was my only point, you know. So anyway, go on, Mr. So you felt you should have had more and more points than that to tell that no, long just, story? <laughs> long story. Yeah, we got a long story yesterday from Greg Lewis, but uh, you know, I was, we won't get back I, I to was that. Thinking, I, 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 I was reading the, the New York Times yeah, today, and, and they were talking well, about yeah. how uh, how many peacemakers there are throughout the world? Peacemakers are these armies, you know, where, where they send an army and they're peacemakers. So every, every place I, 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 they mentioned that they, they, they send peacemakers, there was trouble. And that's the only function of a peace worker is to solve trouble. So, and if there's no trouble, they're out of a job. Yeah, that's right. So I think they perpetuate the war. Yeah, they've got to create a problem. They, they, they go there and they got conflict of interest. Sure, they screw up a little me. Don't bomb too good, you know. Well, then, like this, got to last two, three weeks because I just bought a new TV. Yeah, got a mortgage on the house. But that's um, weird. They, 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 they call it. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Cops and the bonds and gas masks. I think that yeah, the peacemakers are coming. And the well, they don't have any power. Hey, you the peacemakers, the UN, they don't have any power. Solve everything. Who do you think so? All these uh, 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 revolutionaries and the Arabs. You think they're Arabs? They're Arabs? Peacemakers. I carry my peacemaker. Yeah, that's it. You got a piece. Remember in the movie Red River? I was terrible in the army with my gun. But the, the country boys. They, you know, did you learn from the M1? Do you learn from the M1? This is for fighting. This is my gun. No, the, the, yeah, the, we learned to shoot. What, what, with the yeah. M1? Yeah. And, and the M1, you, you set it through click, clicking. It's cool. Yeah. So every time uh, the, the sergeant's walking back and forth, they're never shooting. If you're shooting good, he says, oh, you said what, what clicker do you want? But he would have asked his country kid from Tennessee, who his bullet yeah. went into the other yeah. bullet. I mean, he, he, he yeah. did the with in, in the bullseye, you know? Yeah. And uh, he said, what clickage? Yeah, damn, I don't even know the damn clickage. I said, look at that, look at this center. Pow, pow, pow. Yeah. 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 It was a funny kid. He only weighed about 90 pounds, you know? Yeah, well, those southern boys were dead-eye shots. He brought home moonshine when we went back to the barracks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yep. Those guys made the best snipers in the Second World War were the oh, no, farmers. I'm glad, glad you never went to war in your I went to age. war. I had to go through basic training. I didn't believe it when they were shooting and we were crawling under the thing and they were saying, you know, they're using real bullets. I said, oh my God, did I go down into the mud. <laughs> That was it. Was a great experience, but the army. I, 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 I think the army was good because uh, I only compared myself to other guys who were born in the Bronx and it was nice to meet guys like you, who were born in the Kansas and Nebraska and the Midwest. They were they were different. They were very young in a sense. They were very young in thinking with us because the, the sharp is from New York. Well, but, they sent the young, the old guys sent the young to fight for them, right? They hit combat. Yeah. Oh. Kids. We saw the trailer for your new movie. They're yeah, rehearsing for a giant. Thanks.
Look, if you take the four major religions, they, the two things they have in common are love and compassion to help people who have less than you. These people are... What comes first? Huh? Love or compassion? Love. But the thing, love leads to compassion. No, love is. You feel sorry for a person. You love somebody, and as opposed to hating somebody, compassion is if you have more, you help somebody who has less. So people, you know, look at that. I mean, suppose you just show a compassion and you want to help somebody. Yeah. So if you're compassionate towards somebody, it could lead to, 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 to loving them or eventually if you take care of them. I think it comes out Or if you love somebody, then you become a little bit of a little funny. Now, how about that Karl Rove term, a compassionate conservative? That's political. That was a Karl Rove term. And George W. Bush hung on to that one. That he was a new kind of Republican. He was a compassionate conservative. Well, here's what I've never understood about religious people. I believe in God. What I never understood about religious people is how they say they're religious and they're loving, and yet all they care about is money. Whereas if you think about love, it means we're all interconnected. We value each other's lives. The people who are hungry for money and real estate and uh, materialism, but that's always been the spirit of America. There's always been that duality, right? There's some people who are spiritual and love. And then there are the other people who are only hunger for money, and that's why that's why they all come to Los Angeles because they all want money and real estate and cars. And that's all they care about, right? Well, it's the church of what's happening now. What's when you left with money, then life is still in So uh, at the end is when you when you uh, really know. Money meant to you. Now, so, 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 I think that the question is to feel good about life. And money, I don't think, is instrumental. As long as you're not starving and not shooting at you. And you do your work like all three of us, we followed our passion, <laughs> art, comedy, acting, and we made a living, right, out of our work. Thank God. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's like the little Jewish man got hit by a car, and the guy says, how do you feel? Okay. Years ago, I, 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 how's things? I do okay. Yeah. The reason why we got might be dead or broke. Yeah. It's a living. There was a cartoon in New York years ago in terms of what you're saying. Two guys talking. One guy says to the other guy, "How much do you have?" Yeah. 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 Right? Uh, enough to live. Enough is enough. Because uh, after a while, it's silly with money. You don't know what to do with it. I'm happy to hear a guy with 13 million dollars. I'm happy to hear yeah, that right. you're doing well. That's what I'm happy about. That's one of the reasons that we. Well, you got to find more to be happy about. I can't be. I can't be dependent on money. No, I'm I'm happy. Well, it's all I'm dependent on. Suppose I leave town. Suppose I got. Well, I'm not happy. I, I moved to. Uh, I don't want you to be in Florida, where we're most comics. We retired. can't take the show on the road. We'll have to send for you. Yeah, well, Florida is a great place as long as you don't get out of your car. It's too. And the minute you get out of your car, you get a gear. It's too muggy at night. Blast! Blast! Of that hot air. It's that humid, hot air full of bugs. I don't know how to yeah. speak to live. You, you gotta have gills to live. Gills. 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 To try to make a living shoot. I was wondering what happened in 1965. It's a moral question. Well, I know what I was doing in 65. So anyway, I ended up with no money. So how am I going to get back from Miami to Nebraska? So I had to go pick up two shirts. Miami broke? Yeah. I'm walking down the street, and here comes a drunk Hispanic guy with, remember those see through shirts? Oh, yeah, the band lawn shirt. Right here. The $50 would get the gas back to Nebraska. So I had a moral question. So I grabbed that 50 gun, 
and I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. Even though I was desperate, I didn't. Just having the thoughts is trouble. No, but I always No, no, you are desperate, sometimes you have these things. I chose not to do it. So we all have choices what to do with our life, right? And I chose not to do it. Somehow I ended up getting 35 bucks and I've got this gas to get back home. Two friends of mine from the Bronx went to the Bronx. And they made a living at a parade. They did a parade and they ran into the storm and bought a loaf of white bread. Yeah. And sometimes you can hear they were standing along sandwiches. They're selling sandwiches in the street corner. And they were doing great. Yeah. Did they steal the bread? No, no, they had some probably just enough. Yeah, you just get a big a loaf of Wonder Bread for a buck and uh, there you go. They were, they were un unbelievable. Uh, Really well, everything's an opportunity. You know. That's That's beautiful. Beautiful. Very yeah. industrious. Yeah. They're yeah. Yeah. Even the yeah. 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 Emmy season. Yeah. Yeah. Emmy season. Yeah. Emmy season. Yeah. Yeah. Emmy season. Yeah. Emmy season. Emmy season. Emmy season. Emmy season. And the little marbles, and, and you play with them, and you get the little bits of cut box, and you cut little holes in the cut box, and you roll the Yimmies down, and it goes into the hole in the cut box, and you win that, and it does it, they keep it. And the whole idea of the miracle, and I once had a good day, and I won a whole box, uh, a whole, whole box, and I took the 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 box, and I took well, you pitch your shoes. Short stop and third base. Short stop and third base. Too close to get to it. It's not in the same position. Except you got to be fast. Man. We got the stronger arm to play third. You got to be quick third base because the shot gets you. Yeah, but short stop, you're sometimes backing up the second. We went to the Dodgers. I think you had the Dodgers. Yeah, I got a nosebleed. We go way up. They, they, they keep deducting the price until your nose starts to bleed. That's, that's, that's it. I mean, Don, Don was. Stop at the subway to get a subway sandwich. I said, get a hot dog. And so now he wants his Gotta have a Dodger dog. Eight dollars for hot dogs. Then he said, oh, I wish I would have ordered that hot dog. Eight dollars. So you take your kids and your wife, you say, eight, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four dollars for hot dogs. And then it's a hundred dollar bill. Well, the, the McCourts needed that money, you know. Well, they're coming back now. How, what's happening with them? Are they going to come back? Are they divorced? What's going on? I don't know. It's too dismal to even think about until it's over. <laughs> Magic Johnson from the hoops to baseball sometimes. <coughs> I love it. But sometimes it bores me to death. But it's so beautiful. Yeah, every, every move they make. That totally it's fun to look at the hills from Dodger Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Chavez Ravine. And they have more going on in the game. The game is an incidental thing. They have parades and girls dancing around and, and videos playing. And, and occasionally you watch a guy you know, hit a triple sound. And then when they left, remember when they left? And it was tie, I think, in the 11th inning? And they left. Leaving. Gotta hit that parking lot. That don't happen in the lawn. Yeah. Leaving. 
Oh, they do that Staples Center too. They're watching the big concert and uh, they're they're running for the exits. Uh, well, they're missing the best part of the show, the encore. Well, how about this? You go to premiere. We've all gone to a lot of premieres here in Hollywood. You go to the Academy. Like I went there a couple of weeks ago for the Super 8 DVD Blu-ray of, Su of, uh, of Super 8. Super 8 and, uh, so as soon as the lights go down, even though there's a Q&A going to happen, all the actors stream up go out trying to get that food. You never see so much, you know, like Times Square's actors going for that free food, right? Well, I'll put a spread out and the actors will die for it. Have you ever noticed how the difference between actors and extras? I worked at Universal and the extras, here's what the extras do. They're going through the chow line, they'll get the dessert, the entree, the salad, the drink, and they sit down and watch it. They'll eat their dessert first. They're so hungry, they'll eat that chocolate pudding first. That's terrible what they do in movies. They really discriminate against the extras and the ones who are just working for a day. Yeah. And, uh, boy, you uh, know, sorry, that's not that's, that's for the extras. That's just for the one. Yeah. You know, but there was some, in 1946, Kerry McWilliams wrote an essay exactly what you're talking about. He said there are three levels of actors in Hollywood. One are the movie stars, two are the regular actors, and three are the extras. And none, of, and none of them want to be with the others. And that's, change, that's not changed today. You know, they all have their levels, right? Yeah. Sometimes you see these movie stars, they all think they know each other, right? They go on the Tonight Show, it's like they're all buddies. They pretend, yeah. yeah. You know, that's one of the hardest stuff uh, I ever had to write when I, had to, when I wrote for a variety show, like the Bobby Dan show, like the Martin show. Just having somebody introduce somebody, bring them on, and talk like you just kind of, oh, I hear you made a record deal. It's so hard to write that stuff. It does not look natural. The only time it looks natural is when you are natural, when you really talk. Like one day, Bobby Down was sitting down, and Taj Mahal was the guest. And Bobby, he just showed up and walked and sat down next to Bobby on a bench. And they start just talking about show business, and they start riffing on the song. And I start playing a beautiful duet that nobody thought they would use on the show. And, and it ended up as a, a, a smash on the show. And I, I, I tried to tell the producer, who were very old school, very very to the button. I said, why don't you let them just add? Ah, they can't talk. They can't. Said, they can't. They, they, they played all these clubs. They know all these stories, too. They have such a disdainful opinion, some of mm -hmm. have, of the performer. Performer just keep him in his box and do what he says. That's a good job of all right. You know, one of my favorite shows, uh, moments of a celebrity on TV, Larry King and Marlon Brando. When he tried to get Larry King to put that dog biscuit in his mouth and feed the dog, <laughs> and then when Brando kissed Larry King on the he lips, him, right? Larry King said that was the best kiss he ever got in his life. And he wore dresses after a while. <laughs> Yeah, he was into the moo moo thing. That's what ruined all the singers, the great singers. So was the singer, once he passes a prime. Out comes the moo moo. Yeah. No names, desserts. don't say any names. And, yeah. and then they still work, but they work in moo moos. Whoever invented the moo moo must have been a singer that, that went through yeah. the, 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 the Randall, when he was living out Omar the tent to Nicholson, he had two things. One, he put a, a chain around his refrigerator so he couldn't get at it. And then the duality, he had somebody throw food over the fence to he, he was a compulsive eater. Oh, well, you saw what he looked like. That's right. You, that's one of the fat. You don't get fat by accident. Money, too. You have yeah. to work on being getting Oh, it's hard work, you know, you gotta, all that chewing. I saw a movie years ago at the New Art. It was about 1955, this island right off South Africa, America, where they worked salt. And everybody in the movie was lean because they had to do physical work, the men and the women. There were no fat people. They all did physical labor. And even when I went home to my reunion, the men, blue-collar workers, farmers, they all looked lean. And the women, the farmers' wives, they were heavy. And the men looked like 10 years older than the women, even though they were lean. They, you know what I mean? Those farmers' breakfast. They eat breakfast. Oh, they eat huge farmers. breakfast. Yeah. They pile those pancakes up and they go on. By yeah. the time they go out there, they're ready to be harvested. Not the corn. Yeah, they're ready to go to sleep, yeah. I think. You ever go to an apple butter stir? No. No, no I went to an apple butter stir. They didn't have too many of those in the Bronx. And I saw, I saw this group sing Mississippi Mud. 
And I was walking through this auditorium where they were selling food, you know, things that the farmers had made. And then, you know, you walk around, you feel fabric, you know, like the clothes and you're going to buy something. And then I'm walking out and I see all these coats hung up. And I just unconsciously, I felt this one jacket. And this one guy come walking in, he says, did you find one you like? I realized he thought I was going to steal one of those jackets because there were people hung, hung up there. Yeah. I felt guilty. Even though I feel guilty all the time, I felt guilty. Oh, Harry, you've never been guilty. You were thinking of ripping that guy off. 50 bucks, yeah. You didn't, it doesn't matter, but it's thought in your mind. Well, Don, what's the word of the day? The word of the day is uh, impossible. 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 Could I, could I add one just this one time? No. Well, we, we've got it. He's broken too many rules. You know? yeah. he's, 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 he's impossible. Every time we set up. Harry, it's impossible. Okay. That's the word of the day. No, let, let him say it. He won't be right. Oh, Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Okay. Oh, that, that's your 12-step word. Forgiveness. Okay, thank you. So from the uh, Silver Spoon, we say goodbye.